my cocaine use, my powder cocaine use, had become so great. I was snorting so much in quantity and frequency that I just wasn't getting high. I just wasn't. My tolerance was just that much. And she offered me this rock and this pipe. I was like, okay, it's cocaine. Sure, whatever. It's a different form, but it's cocaine. But it wasn't. Like crack, for anyone that doesn't know anything about drugs, crack is a completely different beast. It's a beast that if you have no fear of, no respect for, it's going to take you down. And it did. I was snorting so much powder cocaine that I actually had three dealers that I'd purchased from because I wanted to make sure I already always had a backup plan in case one of them was out or not available. First hit was mind blowing to the point that I'd been snorting cocaine at this point off and on, but more frequently for 16 years. I mean, at that point, snorting had become almost a daily part of my existence. I love the rituals, I love the powder, I love the chopping, the lining up the lines, the snorting, like I was, that was my drug. Took that first hit, never snorted another line again. If it wasn't rocked up, I didn't want it. it took me by the neck and you know, the morning of February 17th, 2003, I wake up on a filthy mattress on the floor of a North Portland crack house, and I'd lost everything. And that's the thing, when you're so, fo or at least when I, I was so focused on getting high that, you know, bills were going unpaid, all of a sudden I had three car payments due. All that money was going right out the door to, to support my habit. Unless I was willing to turn on this whole syndicate, I was going to take the fall. So that's when I made the decision like, okay, what do you have left? Your body. I just kept telling myself, you know, hey, your body might be for sale, but your soul isn't. It was just one day where I was in between laps on the track. And it was, again, it was summertime, 2003. And it was a hot summer day and I couldn't escape the heat. I just started walking up Sandy. I was like, what is this like property? And it's the grotto. And it's like this spiritual oasis of just like acres of just sacred ground. Those moments in the grotto that summer truly like kept me alive. In those moments, although I was, it was my first inclination of turning into the love of our creator, I was just in such a dark place that I couldn't truly believe that there was anything that could save me. My faith was non-existent. I was, I felt like I just, I felt like I'd gone, I, I'd crossed a point of no return and I just didn't ever see how I'd ever make my way out of this. So I just couldn't believe in anything better than me. I just had to keep saying no to anything that possibly could, could impact what was happening to me and change, turn things around. But that was, that was my, that October 17th, 2009, started out like any other day, you know, I'd get up, see how much dope I had, re-up with my dealer to make sure I had, because I always like to have enough to keep me through 24, 36 hours. I was a hot mess. I hadn't showered. I hadn't gotten ready. I was high. I had, you know, the, my place was not tore up, but, you know, drug paraphernalia was out, dope was out fell to the floor and I finally surrendered. I was just like, oh my God, I can't, I can't live like this anymore, but I don't want to die like this either. I don't know just, I don't know what just happened, but I sensed a connection to something so profoundly good and a love that in my darkest, most undeserving moment loved me enough to help me break that cycle. I said, I cannot not spend every day for the rest of my life honoring and serving that. And in December of 2019, I was contacted by Central Catholic High School. They were in the process of organizing a mental health and addiction unit for their students when a parent heard about their pursuits and recommended they invite me to come speak to their students. Apparently, this parent had been in an audience of Oregon lawyers and judges that I'd spoken with some months prior. 
After my initial meeting with Central Catholic educators, they decided to not only bring me in to speak to their student body, but to also include my book in their 2020 literature circle. After spending the day with their students and having a lively and very transparent Q&A session, administrators reached out to me before I even left campus to discuss when and how they could incorporate my story into reaching more of their student body. Hi there, my name is Kristen Tierney and we're just departing Central Catholic High School in Southeast Portland. I spoke to the senior class uh, for two different se sessions about drug and alcohol addiction, my journey, and what it looks like when we own our true self and transform our lives. It went great, everyone was very engaged and I've heard that they really enjoyed my transparency. Stay tuned, more to come. I survived something that so many don't, that I absolutely have a duty, an obligation, and a privilege to shed light on what we talk about when we talk about you know, social injustice, when we talk about crime and punishment, when we talk about who's affected in the underserved communities. That I get, was blessed, if that sounds crazy, but it was, that I was blessed to have gotten to experience that and to come out the other side of it and to have a voice and to be able to possibly lend that voice to those that maybe never have had a voice or for whatever reason, of which it's not ours to judge, have lost that voice. Are you kidding me? That to me is my purpose. It's what this whole journey is about. It's about something bigger than me. It's about serving our creator. It's about serving humanity. And it's about somehow, even if it's shedding the slightest light, light on how we all are a lot more alike than we are different, then okay, I'm good, I've done my job, I've left the world a better place than I found it.